in the age of multiplayer gaming where persistent player profiles are a big deal and keeping track of your progress through the entire life cycle of a game, it's strange to say, but I feel like stats are becoming less useful. I find myself wondering if the people who designed these sites had a very good idea what they were doing, or even just expected to actually make use of the sites they were building. I am a big stats nerd. I like seeing the stats on how I perform, how other players perform, and trying to use that to get a better understanding of the game, my play, and other people's play. That said, really getting into the stats is something you typically do when you're putting lots of hours into a game. So my personal experience is somewhat limited. For this video, I just want to talk about Halo, Destiny, Call of Duty, and Battlefield. I'll make some comparisons, give some examples of what I think games have done well, where I think they're lacking, and ask that if you've got any insights into other games and how they've done things, that you go ahead and post that in the comments. The first and biggest trend that I've seen that I really do not appreciate is showing how many times you've done something without any basis for comparison. And I think adding XP and progression systems to lots of games is at least partly to blame for this, because they're only concerned with how many times you've done something. Bungie.net's stats for Halo 3 are one of the high points, and they give it a pretty good example of these three basic things you're going to want to be doing when you're looking at stats most of the time. The first is that they normalize everything. Not only do they give you the full count, but they also give a normalized number per game. It makes it useful, and it's pretty obvious that that needs to happen because there are both, uh, they have both social and ranked stats. So in order to compare those, because you're going to have different numbers of games between social and ranked, they have to normalize them somehow. And they do that for both metals and weapons. The next thing that they let you do is compare. So let's say I want to compare my stats with a friend. And it's very easy to tell that we both have fairly consistent play styles, but they are notably different. My friend likes to punch things quite a bit more. The last thing we're going to be able to do is categorize, or filter, or drill down into the results to get a better idea of what's going on. That I average four kills a game with a battle rifle seems really low, because I really like my battle rifles. So if I want to go into a map and say, look at just one map, I can still have the comparison on here, and it will show, yes, I when I'm just playing on Valhalla, I have an average of more than six kills a game with a battle rifle. Say I want to filter by game type, I can do that too. And I can really drill down here. This only comprises a very limited number of games, but the stats are still here and very useful. Now in Halo 3, I can only look at these one at a time. And there are some other games that will show you KD by map, and on some leaderboards you can look and figure out things by game mode. But there's no way to look at the intersection of both map and game mode like we can here in Halo 3. So the first thing I ask for developers and designers of these sites is to separate the ideas between progression and performance. It's fine if you want to have a progression system, but separate it from the performance, which is going to be normalized so that you can actually compare it to other things, other players, other weapons, anything to actually make it useful. I think one reason KD is often seen as important or useful is because it's one of the few stats that's always normalized. Now I said I wanted to include Call of Duty in this comparison, and while I do have some in-game leaderboards, Call of Duty Elite, the online website stats, they took it down last year, so I'm going from memory here and some of it can be kind of sketchy. It's also harder to get less useful than no longer exists. Something that Battlefield and Destiny are both bad at is letting you search for other players. If someone's not on your friends list or you played with in a game recently, good luck finding their stats. And I think that, combined with the less useful stats, is one of the major reasons why we see fan stat sites popping up. And I'd add one more reason to that as well. A lot of the official stat sites have are designed to look nice, but they present the information in not a very dense fashion, which is what someone who's looking at these stats frequently is going to want. You've got lots of just random pictures, lots of excess space, big numbers, when what you really want is just a nice tight table like we saw with uh, Halo 3. 
So let's take, for example, my the Battlefield 4 weapon stats page. Notice they've broken down accuracy and kills per minute by weapon. This, those stats aren't very useful globally because they vary so much with the type of weapon, but here, broken down by weapon, actually kind of interesting. So I've had some questions about why I use the AUG so much in Battlefield 4. You can see here, I have almost 3% higher accuracy with the AUG than I do with the 416. Well, they're very, very similar weapons, but if you pull up the stats on Simthic, the 416 has a little bit more recoil. Now, so I'm getting more headshots with the 416 than the AUG due to that increased recoil, but I'm missing quite a few more shots. I know I use them in roughly the same way, so this is why I've been using the AUG. It just looks statistically better for me. But if I pull up the same info on bf4stats.com, it's easier to make this comparison. The fan site does a better job. Fan sites can also show stats that developers are keeping track of, but just not displaying on their official sites. For example, in BF3, win-loss statistics by game mode, or in Destiny, KD by map. But fan sites can't show information that the developers aren't tracking at all. And so, if the developer chooses not to implement a very good stats system, we're never going to get that information. Also, fan sites aren't going to match the development resources of a publisher, a developer. And so, when it comes to the really cool stuff, that's going to be done by the people who are making the game. Battlefield actually has some interesting things going on in their leaderboards. You can filter by who you compare yourself with on the leaderboards. So we're going to start out with the world. One of the limitations is that not everyone has placed a marker, so if you want to compare to everyone, you have to just set it to world. And if you want to look at, let's say, KD ratios, you can pull it up and, okay, it'll show me the top players. I don't really care. But what's interesting here is that they show the division information. This is messed up, but it's basically a histogram. So you can see what percentage of players fall into what basic range. This is a whole lot more useful than just telling me I'm in a certain percentile. Knowing where everyone else places along that uh, continuum is also really good. So I can do that for uh, kill, kill death, win loss. But then I can do it for something stupid like kills, which, I mean... I guess, if that's your thing, but I don't really care. Okay, and finally we have this monstrosity that is Destiny. It's difficult to navigate, it requires a significant amount of my GPU, disturbingly so, in order to pull up this stupid little thing that mostly just slows the game down, slows the page down. Now, one of the things that's really annoying here is that it's not obvious where all the information is. So, you have to know that you can actually click this if you want to see the Crucible stats. Layout is pretty shitty, but we do have something useful in KD ratio. It's also not obvious that you need to scroll down. And we have leaderboards. Single kills, best score, longest sprees, precision kills. Yeah, you know, it's, it's okay. It's not very, uh, it's not terribly interesting, but I guess it's okay to have that. And then we get to something that's actually interesting and useful, and that is the breakdown of weapons. This is a little off because, well, it'll tell you the comparison between the primary weapons. I like to use auto rifles, and followed by hand cannons. And then it'll show you special weapons but it doesn't compare between those and the choice of heavy weapons, that's okay. And then it shows metals. And this is, again, just horribly formatted, but... And if you want to hover over, you can see how many metals. But... One thing that makes me think whoever did this did not intend to use it, that if we come up here, we can uh, sort by game mode, which, you know, that's cool. That's cool, right? Uh, if you want to calculate this out, I, yeah, I score very... I do quite well normally here. But then they have the leaderboards, the same leaderboards for Rumble. But, um... Yeah, getting more than 23 kills in a single Rumble game, kind of tricky because uh, when you get to a certain score, the game ends, and the only way to get more score than that is to uh, score a bunch of extra points with that final kill or if you might get a multi-kill. So that's not very useful. 
it will break down the weapons by the game mode, but then it doesn't tell you, but this metals thing, uh, this is still, I mean, you're not getting objectively correct in Rumble, so the metals are still just global, and they're not filtered by game type, which, you know, that's not really what I was looking for. One area that stats can be great for, but is severely underutilized, is showing improvement, or just how you're changing and how you play. But most games don't include any option to do anything other than show just lifetime stats. The leaderboards in Call of Duty Black Ops are one exception to this. If you'd played enough games in a week or a month, you could just see your stats for that time period and compare them to other players. Now, it wouldn't store the information about your previous weeks and months results, but if you remember them, or you could just go back and compare to, compare to the lifetime stats, but still, that was very useful. The Battlefield fan stats sites will keep track of your history, but it's just your current lifetime average at that point in the past. And so if you want to actually figure out in a given week or month or so many games how you did, you have to go back and work that out yourself, do a little math. And as I seem to recall, the World at War stats site, the official one, actually did that too. All right, let's go through and look at how uh, these handle recent games or just history or post for a game. So, Halo 3, I can pull up matchmaking history. And it's all very nice and compact. It will give me my team, my place. Okay, and I can pull up the game. It'll show me any files taken from the game and the basic stats about it. I can pull up Carnage. Kills, assists, deaths, KD spread, suicides, betrayal, and total score. You have a pretty good idea what's going down, but if you want to pull down the weapon breakdown, kills with weapons, melee, grenades, vehicles, other, and give you, tell you how many kills with what weapon every player got. There's no... It'll tell you everything. Would you like the field stats? Headshots, best spree, average life, medals, and then a breakdown of how many times you killed who the files from the game, and finally, something that Bungie just, just blows my mind, but the viewer for the game. You can see the different views, and who was where when they killed someone. But, it gets better. You can pull up who killed what, who, who from where with what, and it doesn't work right now, but there is a timeline down here that you used to be able to go through and play through the game like that even better. Let me pull up an objective game. And you can go through and see where the flag was pulled each time. When it had happened during the game. And who killed who during the period of time when the flag was out of the base. You're not going to get this anywhere else. Okay, but let's go ahead and look at uh, Battlefield. And even though Halo had the theater mode where you could rewatch the game, actually pulling up the web stats was still a useful thing to do. Alright, back to Battlefield 4. Okay, and we get battle reports. And, you know, okay, that's cool. But it tells me useless stuff, like I had 1400 score per minute. Well, that's because I got a bunch of awards it, during the game. It doesn't have to do a whole lot with how I actually played in the game. But at least it'll tell me, you know, who's in the game, kills, deaths. I can switch over to squads. Hmm, my team had fewer squads and just as many players. That usually indicates my team is going to win. And you can also pull up things like, uh, you can see the stats that are up here for everyone in the game. You can also pull up their, so this is how you get to other people's stats in Battlefield. If they're not on your friends list, if you've played with them, this is how you get to their stuff. Oh, he got plus three skill, 6% accuracy, used the M4, and had 800 score per minute, and was a recon. So you can get an idea of what's going on, but it's nowhere near the quality that Halo 3 had. And then we have Destiny. We pull up the stats for a game, and they're pretty basic score, kills, KD, and it's only for my team. I can't see the other team here, and as this is one of the ways you would get two other players' profiles in Bungie.net for Destiny, uh, that's really awkward. Okay, we're not even going to get to heat maps in this video, but I think you get the idea. 
when it comes to global stats, it's important that you be able to normalize, compare, and then filter them based on some useful criteria. When it comes to stats for individual games, even more things are possible, and that online stats report can reach further than any post-game ever could. The trend from Bungie alone is very clear, from Halo 3 to Destiny, but I have to ask for your help. Are developers of these websites actually making useful stats, or are they just putting up lots of numbers figuring that'll keep everyone entertained? Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you next time.